Hello and welcome to Dr. Ignatius Gold's medical tutorial. Today we'll be talking about leprosy, which is also known as Hansen's disease. So what is inside? There's introduction about Mycobacterium leprae, epidemiology, pathogenesis, the cardinal features of leprosy, which is given by WHO, ridley Joplin classification and clinical features, lepra reaction and the management, treatment of leprosy, side effects of anti-leprosy drugs, and complications of leprosy, and the management. So let's go. So leprosy, or Hansel's disease, is a chronic granulomatous disease affecting skin and nerves, and is caused by Mycobacterium leprae. So what is this Mycobacterium leprae? So it is a bacteria, it's a intracellular, obligate intracellular, it cannot survive outside the cell, it's pleomorphic, it's acid fast, has aerobic bacilli, it does not have proper anaerobic mechanisms. And M. leprae cannot be cultured in vitro because it cannot survive in uh, any outside media. It should be cultured only in vivo. It can be grown only in animal models like mouse foot pad, hymectomized eradicated mice, nude mice, and nine banded armadillo. So it cannot be cultured in vitro. And M. leprae is a case of subtractive uh, genetics or subtractive evolution. It has evolved and has lost multitude of its important gene. And so it has got minimal cellular machinery and mechanisms. So it is a obligate intracellular bacteria. So epidemiology, talking about the epidemiology, some 4 million people have leprosy. And around 700, 750,000 new cases are detected annually. About 70% of the old leprosy patients live in India, where the disease is endemic in Brazil, Indonesia, Mozambique, Madagascar, Tanzania, and Nepal. So talking about the epidemiology, according to WHO, these are the reasons in which the uh, leprosy is present in quite a significant number, with these black areas where the the, mob, the number of new cases is more. So talking about the pathogenesis, M. leprae has tropism for swan cells and skin macrophages. In tubercular leprosy, effective cell mediated immunity will control the bacillary multiplication and make it posse bacillary, so less lesions will be there and there will be organized epithelioid granulomata will form. In lepromatous leprosy, however, there is abundant bacillary multiplication, cell mediated immunity is less, and the disease will have a multi bacillary form and will invade the swan cells and the perineurium. So, what is the cardinal features of leprosy according to WHO? According to WHO, in an endemic area, an individual should be regarded as having leprosy if he or she shows one of the following cardinal signs. Skin lesions. The typical skin lesions of leprosy is hyperpigmented or erythematous, anesthetic or hypostatic or even normostatic macule or plaque in tubercular leprosy, but may be papillonodules with normal sensation in lepromatous leprosy. With or without thickened tender knobs, and the skin smear positive for acid fast passage line. So, this is the uh, Acid fast bacilli positive sample of a slit smear. So, slit smear is taken from the eyebrows, the earlobes, and the skin lesions and is stained with modified Jill Nielsen method. So, this is the investigation, is a typical investigation done in leprosy. Slit smear and it turns out to be AFV positive. So, why, what are the classifications of leprosy? The really Joplin classification, which we mostly follow, the WHO classification. And others include Indian classification and Madrid classification. So the Ridley Joplin classification classifies leprosy into five different variants. Tuberculoid leprosy, borderline tuberculoid leprosy, meat borderline or borderline borderline leprosy, borderline lepromatous leprosy, and lepromatous leprosy. So in really Joplin classification, only the two polar forms, the tubercular type and lepromatous type, are stable. This tubercular type occurs in patients with very good immunity, 
and Lipromatous leprosy are caused in patients with very poor immunity. These are stable. The other forms of the borderline group of leprosy are unstable, and the disease may worsen from borderline tubercular to BV to BL. In contrast with treatment or with anti leprosy drugs, the disease may move in the opposite direction. So, other types of leprosy include indeterminate leprosy, historic leprosy, and neurotic leprosy. So, this neurotic leprosy is very common in India where it accounts for 10% of the presentation of leprosy. There are no skin lesions. But only the nerve is involved. The skin is not involved. There are no skin lesions. There is only thickened, tender nerve. So this is the neurotic leprosy. So about indeterminate leprosy, it is seen on the face of children in endemic areas. It's always a macule. It's ill-defined, atrophic, hypostatic or normostatic, hypopigmented or slightly erythematous lesion with or without nerve thickening. So this is an example of indeterminate leprosy, ill-defined, hypopigmented, hypostatic macule on the face. What about tuberculoid leprosy? It's a localized form of infection and it's very infrequent. Or there are one or two asymmetrically located lesions. They are asymmetric. They are always well-defined. They are hypopigmented. The anesthetic macula of plaques often with an active border. The lesions show hair loss and impairment of sweating. And the superficial feeder nerve or a single regional nerve is often thickened and even may be nodular. So this is a tuberculoid leprosy, well-defined hypopigmented hypostatic plaque with a feeder nerve. So what about the borderline tuberculoid leprosy? Lesions are large, hypopigmented macular plaques. They differ from a tuberculoid type in that they are, they are less sharply demarcated, they have satellite lesions, they are more in number, they are less asymmetrical, and they are less hypostatic. So in these four categories, they differ from tuberculoid type. Less sharply demarcated, have satellite lesions, more in number, less asymmetrical, and less hypostatic. And also a few knobs may be asymmetrically thickened. So this is a type of uh, borderline tuberculoid leprosy. There is a well-defined hypostatic erythematous plaque and there is a satellite lesion. So we saw a well-defined hypostatic erythematous plaque with a small satellite lesion, like a satellite. What about the mid borderline? So there are numerous lesions that are distributed asymmetrically. So as we go through the increasing severity, the lesions become more and more symmetrical. The lesions are characterized by erythematous, raised annular plaques with central clearing and sloping edges. So there is an inverted saucer appearance. There is an inverted saucer appearance. Lesions are hypostatic. And there are multiple asymmetrically thickened knobs. So this is the lesion of uh, borderline leprosy. There's an inverted saucer appearance. So erythematous matters, annular plaques, and the lesion with the inverted saucer appearance. So what about the borderline lepromatous leprosy? This resembles lepromatous leprosy but differs from it in that the lesions are bilateral and less symmetrical. Lepromatous leprosy is usually very symmetrical. The lesions may be hypostatic. In lepromatous leprosy, the sensation is not lost. The sensation is normal. They are small, uh, but they are larger than the lepromatous leprosy. They are usually small in and of itself, but they are larger than lepromatous leprosy. And the peripheral knob involvement is bilateral with tendency to asymmetry. So the peripheral knob involvement is not perfectly symmetrical. So these are the borderline lepromatous leprosy. A small plaque present almost uh, symmetrically and the lesions are small and ill-defined. about the lepromatous leprosy? Lepromatous leprosy is a systemic disease and it is extensive. Uh, disease is a very severe form of the disease. It has a cutaneous neural and systemic involvement. So the facial lesions in the lepromatous leprosy, there is diffuse infiltration of the face, ear lobules, and alacnazi. 
There's loss of the lateral third of the eyebrow, there is super, which is also called supraciliary malarosis. And the facial deformities are now rare. Leonine faces is now a bit rare. This is the lepromatous leprosy. There is diffuse infiltration of the face. There is infiltration of the yellow view. And there is super supraciliary malarosis. The lateral one third of the eyebrow has been lost. This is a typical leonine faces. What are the cutaneous lesions in lepromatous leprosy? There are numerous symmetrically distributed lesions. Now, three types of skin lesions are typical macules, papillonodules, and a variant called histoid leprosy. Macules are small, hyperpigmented or erythematous, ill defined, mostly confluent macules. Hypostasia is minimal, it is, uh, the sensation is usually not lost. In papillonodules, is the most frequent type of lesions of lepromatous leprosy is the papillonodule. It's ill defined, there are dull red papules and nodules on a diffusely infiltrated skin, so there are papules and nodules on a diffusely infiltrated skin. In the histoid leprosy, there is a distinct variant of the lepromatous leprosy and is characterized by presence of well-demarcated, juicy, cutaneous and subcutaneous nodules present on the normal-looking skin. So other manifestations of leprosy may include peripheral anesthesia, tropic ulcers and motor dysfunction. So this is the lepromatous leprosy. A multiple barely perceptible lesions on the back, the lesions are barely perceptible. And on the B, there is a lepromatous nodules, infiltrated skin on chin, and these are the histoid, juicy looking cutaneous and subcutaneous nodule. So nerve involvement. About the nerve involvement, the nerve involvement is usually bilaterally symmetrical in lepromatous leprosy. There is a peripheral nerve thickening. Nerve may become tender, especially in type 2 reaction. And the nerve function impairment also occurs, usually late in the lepromatous leprosy, and it will manifest as glove and stocking anesthesia, and consequence trophic changes including trophic ulcer and motor deficits. So these are the knobs that are usually involved, the greater auricular, the median radial or ulnar nerve, the radial cutaneous nerve, the lateral popliteal nerve, the posterior tibial nerve or the sural nerve, these knobs are usually involved. So we have systemic involvement, there can be lymphadenopathy, hepatosplenomegaly, ocular involvement, and testicular atrophy. So other clinical manifestations are infiltration of skin, nasal deformity, supraciliary matherosis, glove and sticking anesthesia. There can be claw hand or wrist drop due to the due to this effect on the nerves. There can be clawing of toes or foot drop, and there can be trophic ulcers. So now, talking about the type 1 lepra reaction. It occurs in borderline leprosy, the unstable varieties including borderline tuberculoid, borderline borderline, and borderline lepromatous. The pathogenesis is due to the alteration in the host cell mediated immunity. So it occurs when the host cell mediated immunity increases or decreases. So depending on whether there is an improvement or deterioration of the cell mediated immunity, type 1 reaction can be upgrading reaction or Reversal reaction. So when the cell mediated immunity improves, as the seen in patients on treatment, the there is an upgrading reaction. So from BL to BB to BT. And downgrading reactions occur when the cell mediated immunity worsens, as seen in the natural course of disease without any medication and in pregnancy. So manifestations are EES, the mnemonic E E N S. Uridema, edemia, and scaling of the pre existing lesions occur. Uridema, edema, and scaling. There will also will be the appearance of new lesions. There will be neuritis, inflammation of the nerves, clinically manifesting as nerve tenderness, the appearing, appearance of increasing new areas of sensory impairment and motor deficits. So, this is the uh, clinical picture. Leprosy in type 1 reaction, there is uridema, edema, and scaling of the pre existing lesions. So type 2 lepra reaction or the edema norosum leprosum, ENL. It occurs mostly, most commonly in lepromatous leprosy and sometimes in uh, borderline lepromatous leprosy. The pathogenesis is due to the immune complex reaction. So the manifestations are, there is an appearance of several tender, evanescent, which means short-lasting, uridematous nodules on face, flexors, and legs. And sometimes these lesions may become postular and ulcerate. In case of necrotic ENL, they become postular and ulcerate. Neuritis, they can be arthralgia, orchitis, and urethocyclitis. 
there can be fever. <laughs> These are the clinical pictures of erythema nodosum leprosum. They are evanescent, tender erythematous nodules. This is the close up of the lesions, and this is the necrotic ENL. So uh, this, is, this is the table showing the, about the reactions in leprosy. You can pause and read them. Uh, I'll focus on the treatment now. In type 1, the treatment is prednisolone 40 mg. And the dose can be gradually reduced over 3 to 6 months. And uh, for uh, lepra reaction type 2, the treatment is for moderate cases, prednisolone 40 mg daily. The similar ma management uh, technique or the similar treatment schedule is uh, useful. But in severe cases, thalidomide, unless the patient is pregnant or planning to become pregnant, or prednisolone, 40 to 80 mg daily, and we reduce the dose over 1 to 6 months, and we'll give local uh, steroids if the eye is involved. So this is the treatment of lepra reactions. So the WHO recommended uh, multidrug therapy in leprosy. First of all, we'll divide the uh, leprosy according to the WHO criteria. We'll see if it is a postibacillary single skin lesion leprosy. So if there is only one skin lesion, we go through the postillary single lesion uh, leprosy the schedule. And if there are two to five skin lesions, we'll go to the postibacillary one. And if there are more than five skin lesions, we'll go to the multibacillary therapy. So if there is only single lesion, then we'll go to the ROM therapy. R O M ROM. So R O M ROM stands for rifampicin. Ofloxacin and minocycline. The Rome therapy, single dose ROM is enough for single lesion. Single lesion, single dose Rome therapy. For possibacillary 2 to 5 lesions, we'll give uh, our total duration of treatment is 6 months, and in that we'll give monthly supervised rifampicin 600 mg once a month and DAPS 100 mg daily. But if the leprosy is multibacillary or there are more than 5 lesions, 5 skin lesions, so we'll give the therapy for 12 months. Uh, the treatment resume is similar to the possibacillary one, except we add half the dose to So, if there is rifampicin 600 mg once a month, we add 300 mg clofazimine uh, once a month. And if there is uh, DAPS 100 mg daily self administered, then we we'll add 50 mg clofazimine daily once administered. Look at this table and understand it's quite easier to remember this. So the side effects of anti-leprosy drugs are the side effects of Dapsona hemolytic anemia, drug eruptions, exfoliative dermatitis, toxic epidermal necrolysis, or hepatitis. The rifampicin will have side effects like hepatitis and drug eruption, and clofazimine will give side effects like ichthyosis, brownish pigmentation, and gastrointestinal side effects. So what are the complications of leprosy? So claw hand is a, one of the complications. So there is a 36-year-old patient develops progressive weakness of the muscle of his head associated with neuritis of ulna and median nerves. There is also clawing of toes. There can be clawing of toes. He also had clawing of toes due to the involvement of posterior tibial nerve. So here we have trophic ulcer, well-defined punched out ulcer with hyperkeratotic margins. Ulcers are paleness and occur on pressure points. Over time, over a period of time, there is resorption of the disease, uh, disease in uh, leprosy, there is resorption of the disease too. So facial palsy can occur, and this can result in the exposure keratitis. So what are the treatment? How do we treat the complications? For trophic ulcer, we'll give rest, non-weight bearing splints and antibiotics. For motor deficits, we'll give physiotherapy, splints and surgical correction. For erythrocyclitis, we'll give topical steroids and oral steroids. For orchitis, we'll give oral steroids. Please subscribe for more videos. Uh, comment what do you want to see next. Thank you.